Amazing, phenomenal, so good. We're excited. You guys excited about tonight? Hey, why don't, why don't we do this? Why don't we just take, now I'm going to say two minutes, and I really mean like a, like a minute and a half, and just meet some people that are next to you, say hello, welcome them, introduce yourself. All right, all right, come back. Come on back. Stop meeting people. Don't say hello no more. We're gonna pray together. Look, the reverence, the reverence that overtook the crowd. We're going to pray. Well, let's, uh, you guys, I I'm really excited about tonight. We're going to have so much fun. Look at these amazing people up on stage today. We're going to have so much fun today. It's so good. I've been, I've been waiting for Sunday since, since last Sunday, I think. I'm just pumped. Two reasons. Um, I I'm, not the, I'm not the biggest Instagram person, but if you do... You probably don't follow me, but you might follow my wife. She's been gone for a week. She's, I tell everybody, my wife has left me, but only, but only for a week. And um, she, went to, she went to Israel with, uh, with Bethel Music, which is, pretty, which is pretty cool. She's living the dream, doing, a, doing whatever they do there. I don't know what they do there, but she's got lots of pictures, and it's, and it's beautiful, and it's awesome. And she comes back tomorrow. So uh, answer to, to my personal prayer. My, my kids are alive, ba barely, barely alive. The first half of the week was good. Second half, lives were almost lost the second half of the week. It was, I don't know if any dads can relate, but somehow my, my kids are like, you're not as fun as mom. I'm like, no, 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 but you're, you're alive. So that's, you know what I mean? We got to give and take both places a little bit. And, uh, so we've been having, we've been having uh, minimal fun. I would say lots of fun. Minimal fun all week. Uh, they're, they're eating, they're eating uh, pizza. And, um, and we did, just, just full disclosure, we drove through McDonald's one time. <laughs> one time, only because, and I told them if you, if, now mom's going to know, but maybe it's, it doesn't matter. Uh, I said, if you tell mom we drove through McDonald's, I will kill you. You're going to die. <laughs> That's it. That's it. So we've been, we've been doing that and lots of, lots of uh, warm-up food in the oven. So everything's 400, 400 degrees on everything. I just want to let you know it doesn't matter what the package says, 400 degrees, and it works because I'm a dad, and that's what we do. So we are, we are excited for, uh, for Lee to come back, and, and, and today she'll be back tomorrow. So I'm, I'm pumped for today to, to get through tonight. I'm just excited about it. It's going to be awesome. But I am excited for what God's going to do tonight. It is, it's so good. I've been thinking, just thinking about, uh, I just feel like even when I walked in the room today, felt like dreams are coming true. It's been a week of us. I talked about my wife uh, just because, but it's been a week of us as a family celebrating uh, a little bit of Leah's dreams coming true, a little bit. And then here's what she did. Listen, can I just, we're just gonna have family time just for a moment. If you follow her, she posted a picture. I'm not like super, you know, I don't super care about, 
Christian famous people. They're not real famous, they're Christian famous, just so you know, they're not even real famous. I, I call them Christian famous, it's like, some people know you, most people don't, it's Christian famous, it's not real life, you know what I mean? So I don't care much about those people. I mean, I, Jesus loves them and I, I honor them, but you know, I'm not trying to get in line for an autograph or nothing like that, except, except my wife said, hey, do you know who's on this trip with me? I said, no, who's, who's on this trip? Internally, I was like, I don't care who's on this trip. And then she said, and then she said, Joel Osteen's on this trip. And that's what I did. Oh. Because there's like two people. There's Joel Osteen and T.D. Jakes. I mean, just, just to be honest, those are, those, are two, those are two people. And so I said, get a picture. She said, no. I said, babe, get me a, I just want a picture. You and Joel, be like, hey, what's up? Get a little picture. So it took me three days to talk her into a picture with Joel Osteen, and finally she took one just for me, and I said, post the picture. She's like, she said, y you're, you're dumb. I'm not posting that picture, because she cares less than I do about that stuff, but it's Joel Osteen, so I, th I just thought that was cool. And, and then I thought, wait, that's my dream, that my wife is living. <laughs> that's not even her dream. Isn't, doesn't the Lord work like that sometimes? You're just like, I got dreams and desires in my heart, and then you you wake up one day and someone else is living your dream, just doing the thing that you want to do in life. So here's what I had to do, legitimately in the car. I had to say, Lord, thank you so much that my wife got to meet Joe Osteen. It's so good that she got to do that. And, and I celebrated my dream that she's living. You know what I'm saying? So listen, so, some of us tonight just need to celebrate the, the dream that someone else is living. Yeah, listen, it's the, your, your dreams might not be here yet, but someone else has got it. I'm convinced someone's got it. And if you can celebrate what God's doing in their life and celebrate things God's doing, listen, God's gonna, God's gonna open up doors for you. I just can't wait. I just don't wanna go to Israel to meet him, to be fair. Houston, I'm down to go there, but, but, but not to Israel. So we're, listen, we're gonna celebrate tonight. Dreams are gonna come true tonight. We're gonna celebrate miracles tonight. God's gonna to show up for you in the most extravagant and amazing and phenomenal ways. But I do feel like tonight's gonna to be a night of celebration. Are you ready? Listen, just celebrate. Let's do this. I'm gonna walk off, but, before, but as we do, they're gonna start the beautiful thing that they do. You know how they start worship while I talk and it's epic. It's just like the Lord shows up when they play something. You're not playing nothing? There it is. There, oh, there it is. There it is. I love it. I love, oh, oh, and the Holy Spirit just came. He just came. Here's what we're gonna do tonight. Listen, I just want all over the room. I know we had some fun, I know we joke around, but let's put our hands in the air and let's just put thankfulness on our lips and just thank him that your dreams are about to be reality. God, you're gonna show up tonight in extravagant ways. You're gonna love people in extravagant ways. Your presence is gonna come in the most extravagant ways. And we just say, Lord, tonight, we wanna worship you in thankfulness tonight, in thankfulness, just all over the room on your lips right now. Just put thankfulness on your lips and just tell him how good he is. Tell him how amazing he is. Tell him how wonderful he is and let's worship together. Forever changed, for. 
for your faithfulness, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness, God. Let's just continue to celebrate his faithfulness tonight.
As I look over my history, you've been faithful. Oh, remember your history with God.
For time, mm. you and I got history way before creation, before I was even formed, you knew.
go way, way back. We go way, way back. It's you and I.
it fall. Even within us, let it expand tonight. Christ in us, the hope of glory. go there so take us there deep calls out to deep we want to go there oh Oh, Spirit of God, come, 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 come. We want your glory tonight. Break in and break out tonight.
Father. You know, when heaven comes, that means Jesus came. That means Jesus came because Jesus is heaven, amen? If we go to heaven, we don't have Jesus. I don't want to go to heaven. I want to be with Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, God. You know, I, I really feel like, I mean, it's the obvious. There is a massive spirit of breakthrough in this room right now. And uh, I mean, God is just here. You know, when we come up here to close and stuff, it's like, ha, what do I say on this thing? Because this is, God, I don't want to mess this up, man. The presence of God is, grab it. <laughs> but here's what I feel like. There is, I'm going to share a testimony in just a second. But there is, there is a sound deep on the inside of many of us here. And it's felt locked up for some of you guys for years, for some of you guys for a couple days, for some of us for months. But that sound needs to be released. And there's gonna be some things broken tonight. And we're gonna lift up a mighty shout in a few minutes, in a few seconds, we're gonna lift up a massive shout that's likened to the walls of Jericho that are gonna bring walls down, not outside of you, but inside of us. Amen? We just recently had an amazing weekend here with our, our Bethel weekend with our family here at the church. And uh, we had a young man come up here and share a testimony that was just so powerful. His name is Simeon, and he's just an amazing young man. But he first showed up at our youth service, our youth ministry, you know, beginning of the, of the school year this last year. And Simeon came in really battling some intense things. He was battling autism. And he would, he would hide under chairs and, and was just really freaked out by large crowds. He began to get into the presence of the Lord. And then he heard, his dad told me he heard a testimony of three of our teenagers sharing about one of them had scudding, cutting scars that dissolved. One of them got set free from pornography and the other one got set free from fear. And the sound, yeah, the sound of the presence of God on somebody else's story of how they encountered Jesus did something inside of him. He continued to come and the presence of God would just touch him. And then one day he got set free from pornography. And his life just began to shoot. In December, he goes back to the doctor and the doctor said, you are totally fine. You don't need your meds anymore. His kid's completely off of his meds, totally set free. And he came up here, many of you guys were here. He came up here and he shared his testimony at the conference this last Saturday and was bold. I mean, just going after it, commanding every spirit of autism, pornography, and everything else to just get out of this room, just going for it. He was killing it. It was awesome. But I was reading Acts chapter two. It says there was a sound from heaven that came down and, and it, it didn't just fill this pocket over here or this one over here, but it filled the whole room. How many of you guys know you're a house of heaven? He lives on the inside and he's waiting to be, to be released. Jesus Christ has paid the price for everything needed in this room. He's paid the price for every wall that needs to come down. There's, you're not immune to his grace. You've not blasphemed the Holy Spirit where God, you're just, you know, God's just, he's just, that one gets touched, that one gets, oh, we're gonna skip him. That one. God don't work like that. He's pouring out his glory. He's pouring out his presence. And it's time for us today to grab it by faith. We're gonna lift up a mighty shout and lift our voices in this place and we're gonna break, some of you guys be like, we'd be like, we'd be like this. God, I'll shout when the walls come down. You're gonna be waiting forever. The Bible says, faith spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. utterance. You gotta lift your voice. It's called an act of faith. Well, I'm not feeling it. Then be a faith, then be, be a faith person, not a feeler today. Because God wants it for you. And, I, and, and then on a serious, I, I feel like some of you guys here, you're battling like discontentment. Maybe that marriage didn't work out or, or you, you fail again or something, business closed down or something painful happened and you're sitting there. Listen, that's, it's time to work through that grief, but in the middle of that place is where you need to begin to get your shout back. It's, where, it's in that place where you need to begin to grab your joy in the middle of that place, not waiting till afterwards. Sometimes you just gotta go to war from a place of faith. We're not shouting for victory. We're shouting because we have victory tonight. Amen? So here's what we're gonna do tonight. Listen, I want you to get your praise on, to get ready. You got your praise pants on, you got your spirit fingers up. <laughs> I don't know what that is, it just sounded fun. <laughs> just how many guys are just ready to be unlocked? 
They're just ready to get unlocked. They're just ready to unlock it. Listen, the good news is the lock was already transformed 2,000 years ago when Christ rose from the grave. Come on. One, two, three. Lift it up.
so good. You're the God of the breakthrough. You're the Lord of the breakthrough. You're the breakthrough over cancer. You're the breakthrough over depression. You're the God of the breakthrough over our own attitudes, amen. <laughs> yeah, just put your hand on your heart. Say, thank you, Jesus, that you paid for everything for me, for my family. I fix my eyes on you, Lord. The author and the perfecter of my faith in Jesus' name. Come on, give God a big shout of praise. So good. So good. Look at, why don't you find somebody around you? Look at him with them prophetic eyes of fire because he lives in you and tell him breakthroughs here. Will you just give it up for the worship team and the choir? Thank you. Woo, so good. There's a lot of you in here tonight. We do have the overflow room open to my left, your right, in the great room. I'll let you find your seats quickly. If you're tuning in from Bethel TV for the first time, welcome to Bethel Church, Redding, California. Lovely to have you here. And whilst you find your seats, if you are visiting Bethel Church in this room tonight for the very first time, or if you're in the overflow room and you're visiting for the very first time tonight, family, we're going to welcome them. Would you please stand so we can just give you a nice welcome? Thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad you're here. It's lovely to have you. Oh, there's more popping up. There we go. Thank you for coming here and being our friend. If you wouldn't mind keeping your hands raised, those are just dead. We've got um, some ushers with a card that we'd love you to fill in and stay connected with us. Also, it gives you 20% off an item from the Eagle's Nest bookstore to my left, your right. Um, it also gives you a free weekend download message that you can get from the South Lobby, and that's our info booth. Marvelous, wonderful. I've got a few announcements for you. you ready? It feels weird to not have my, okay. Um, we have our Love and Logic parenting class. That should be starting on the March the 13th at Twin View. This is a six week course, a lovely course for those who just love your children by setting limits and holding children accountable. Yes, that starts um, on March 13th, Twin View. For more information, just go to that link up there. Secondly, we have our Good Friday service. That's where all of the churches in Reading love to join together. It's on March the 30th. We have three services, 4 p.m., 6 p.m., 8 p.m. at Auditorium, Reading Civic Auditorium. And there will be no childcare for that particular time, just to give you a heads up. We also have our missions family trip to Ethiopia. That's with Ryan and Sarah Hall, July the 19th to the 30th. So we give you a little bit of time to save up. The cost is $2,950, but that does include your airfare as well. So there's that. That sounds like an amazing trip, actually. And then we, lastly, we have our um, youth camp. And this is our Hire a Student fundraiser. I kind of love it. If you're in renovation, this is perfect timing for you. Starts March the 10th. We are basically, if you need your windows cleaned, yard work, anything like that, maybe not renovation, maybe that's a bit too intense. Um, that's, to help, that's for helping the Young Saints students pay for their camp this summer. So if you just want to just fund into that and they would love to just help you, um, that's the best way to do it. We just have one promo video for you now.
Man, our youth are so cool. Like, I watch that, and I'm like, I feel old and not cool anymore. I just love it. Um, on that really positive note, it's offering time. So why don't we stand up? I'm going to read you a few verses um, from John 21. Might be a familiar story, but it's just so good. Uh, the disciples were out fishing. Verse 4 through 7, it says, But when the day was now breaking, Jesus stood on the beach, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. So Jesus said to them, Children, you do not have any fish, do you? And they answered him, No. <laughs> like, nope. And he said to them, Well, cast the net on the right hand side of the boat, and you will find a catch. So they cast, and then they were not able to haul it in because of the great number of fish. And then this next verse is what I want to focus on. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved turned and said to Peter, it's the Lord. <laughs> That's his comment. Verse 7, it's the Lord. And what I loved about this is those who knew Je uh, Jesus best on the entire planet, those who had spent three years walking with him, who knew him better than anyone else, when something happened, when they got more than enough, when there was an extravagant blessing, they, they turned and said, ask the Lord. That's his calling card. That's what they knew him as, and that was apparently normal. When he was more than enough, when all they needed was a meal, and then gave him a whole boat of fish, he said, that's Jesus, that's the Lord. And um, I just encourage that that apparently is his norm. That's the kind of God he's like. It says he gave him 153 fish, which I love that the disciples later were apparently counting them. One, two, because we got the number exact. Um, and so just as we're giving tonight, I just want us to remember that he is the God of more than enough. He's the God of extravagance. And apparently it's so normal and so common for him that when something like that happens, they, they can go, that's the Lord. We know it. That's him. Um, so tonight I want to just uh, read some declarations and just put our words behind this um, and just declare some powerful stuff. So let's do offering reading number three. I love offering reading number three. Just declare stuff about the city. Can't get enough of that. Um, so when that comes up, we're going to do it. It's going to be good. Okay. As we pray for new wells of revival, we pray for new economic wells in Reading to be created. So Lord, we ask you for favor for our city with CEOs, government leaders, and kings. Firms that produce goods for the nations and provide new jobs for our people. Technology to establish new markets, energy sources, and efficient solutions to grow as a population. Laws and courts that measure with the justice and the freedom of our land's constitution. Civil servants that encourage entrepreneurs and a media known for wisdom and truth. Natural resources released, harvested, sold, and reproduced. Education, books, and universities that develop mind molders who influence the influential. Capital to build small businesses that provide services, arts, and culture, attracting both young and old. Medical community known for integrity and excellence. Repentance from poverty, small thinking, and envy. Courage to recognize opportunities and make wealth. Abundance to bless the world and the prudence to save and invest. Revelation to pass on wealth to our children's children. So we declare that when the righteous prosper, the city rejoices. Hallelujah. I like that line that says, abundance to bless the world. You know, those 153 fish, probably a bit much for those few disciples. I'm imagining they had a lot of those, and then they were able to give it out and begin to bless the world because of what the Lord did in their life. Just thinking. Um, so why don't we go ahead and pray? Lord, just thank you, thank you, thank you that you are so predictably good 
that when there is extravagant blessing, the kind of blessing that would just tear the nets, we can turn and say, that's the Lord, that's Jesus. And so Lord, we ask that in our blessing, we would bless the world. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, well, on Sunday nights, we got some beautiful buckets up here. And so uh, the music's gonna play, and when it plays, you can rush up to the front and put it in. I'm letting out this fire tonight that's burning in my spirit. I'm gonna dance with all my mind. I don't care who sees it. I'm gonna let it work. Be just like a child and say, I love you, Lord. I'm on my for a treat. I don't know if you realize it, but tell your neighbor, just elbow him right now and tell him you came on the perfect night. I don't know how many people in here got one of the programs, but tonight we are doing another performance. We did it a few weeks ago on a Saturday night. And it was so incredible that we wanted to share it with you as well. Expect to be inspired. Expect to experience celebration. But not just that, it's also education. I all, um, when we did this performance a few weeks ago, it was so crazy that as, as, we, as, we, experience, as we were watching it, I was inspired, my heart was tenderized, and I, I was like, gosh, God, this is an upgrade for us. As a body, um, I felt like God was inviting us into a new level. Like he was widening stuff for us and he was upgrading. Like we sing about his glory and experiencing more of the Father. I feel like tonight you're gonna experience more of the Father. It's done in excellence. So expect to be wowed. <laughs> Enjoy. And um, your heart to be tenderized as you um, walk through this journey with us. This is a, a performance put on by our being leadership, which is our black empowering and impacting the next generation. John? And we'll be highlighting some moments through black history from slavery till current day. And it is a beautiful journey. And I just want to invite you to join us. And I want to make sure we pray before we... Yeah. Oh, so I don't know if you want to say something. Yeah, so if you're obviously watching online with us tonight or you're in this room or the overflow rooms, uh, tonight is a step in a journey that we have all been on for a couple of years now at least of just really seeking the Lord when it comes to uh, the conversation around the ministry of reconciliation. And so tonight is a step in that direction. And like Candace said, the other night when uh, Saturday night, it was just one of those special nights. God showed up and just ruined all of us. And uh, we said, so we, we got to do this on a Sunday night at church. And so that's tonight. So good job on coming tonight. And um, my, our prayer and our desire is that you would open up your heart and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. And we have no doubt whether God's going to show up and just reveal stuff to you tonight. So we're really excited about that. So let's pray for the night, and then we're going to get going. Yeah, so Lord, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your spirit. And we just ask you to have your way, that you would tenderize our hearts, so you would open our eyes. Lord, and just show us your face. And I thank you for just the talented artists who are stepping on this stage, God. I thank you that you would pour out your love. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that you would guide us in wisdom and truth tonight. And I just pray that your love would go deep and would cover everything. Yeah, we say yes to you, Lord, and yes to what you're doing. Amen. Amen. Enjoy. So with that, we're going to present Walk With Me, Lord. Oh yeah, way too much story. <laughs> 400 years worth of story. <coughs> Almost 400 years. Oh. This is a story of a people, a vibrant people, mm. and their journeys in a land that went from prison to home. From wrong to right, from darkness to light. Lost, stolen from their motherland, looking for their name. Negro. Colored. Black. African American. Looking for their family, for a mother, for a father, for a sister, for a brother. In the land of the free and the home of the brave. This is the story of the slave, the pain. The spirit. The freedom. The way to a new day. Where was God when... The ships came over with bodies piled like cargo. Oh, he was in the sea, groaning with pain, crying tears like hurricanes. Where was God when jazz erupted and new sounds on the scene, when Jackie Robinson's and Sidney Poitier's became the first faces to achieve the American dream? Oh, he was in the juke joint, <laughs> bebopping and doing the twist. Oh, he never missed a glimpse, not one good night kiss. Yes, it was hard. It was bloody. It was brutal. But he never left. He never forsook his beautiful black bride. Where was the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Right there, walking with his children. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. While I'm on this teacher's journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. Mm -hmm. And he walked with them. From West Africa through the transatlantic slave trade, he walked with them. Twelve million of them, chains and all to the Caribbean, to Brazil, to the not so United States at the time. He walked with them. 246 years of slavery, building the economy of a nation. He walked with them, being sold off and split from families, being bred like cows, being whipped like mules, language, song, name removed. Where was God while the spirit of the African was being brutally bruised? He was comforter, loving on their wounds with hymns, giving them tunes, Negro spirituals, lifting their spirits to hold on just a little while longer. He was comforter, sending his spirit to dance with them like fire by night, to lead them by twinkling lights to freedom. He was the cloud by day, the manna that always came. In the midst of the blood, sweat, and tear-stained stress, he was comforter. Christ said, eat of my flesh, drink of my blood. He died that there would always be enough, and the cadence of freedom could never be beaten from their blood. The beauty of their name still etched in the rhythm of their yesterday, like Chica from the Congo, like Sinte on the Jimbe. 
50 generations of slaves may not remember the choreography, but they feel the rhythm. They hear the beat crying out to them from across the sea, beckoning them to cling to their creator, their comforter, and to brave the storm. memories alive, save those that history books create, save those that songs beat back into blood, beat back out of blood with words sad sung in strange un-Negro tongue. So long, so far away is Africa. Subdued and time lost are the drums, and yet through some vast mist of race there comes this song. I don't understand. This song of atavistic land, of bitter yearnings lost without a place. So long, so far away is Africa's dark face. Freedom, oh freedom, oh freedom over me. And before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. No need to go home now. He's bringing it down. Oh, it's time. Say what now? It's time. What time? 
is it? It's time. Time for what? Time for freedom. Oh. See, his love came shining through. His presence came pouring down like defender. He, he is, is defender. defender. 1860s, and the country is bubbling like a boiling brook. Ooh. I mean, pouring out steam, mm -hmm. pouring out fire, Ooh. southern and northern divide. Slaves jumping the Mason-Dixon line oh to bear arms with blue coats. All right. You have red coats over here fighting for their rights to own humans. What? And we... We hang in the balance. Mm. We wait for a sound, yeah. a call, yeah. a song, a notation, mm. a letter, an address, an <laughs> emancipation <laughs> proclamation. But he is defender. defender. Yes, and he's raising up abolitionists. Mm -hmm. Some black, Come on. some even white. Come on. All laying down their lives. Fighting with their words, not their guns. Yes. With their underground railroads, mm. with their voices, rallying the conscience of America yet again. <laughs> like Frederick Douglass, mm. runaway slave, minister turned Methodist, yes. turned council to president, yes. standing on the gospel like a podium, like a roll Come map, on. standing on the cross <laughs> like a drum, bada bum bum, huh? <laughs> like a dream. He Raising up an army to shout for the voiceless, Come to on. sing for those without shoes, Hallelujah. to howl for those without hope, yes. to fight for those without strength. Where was God when bombs were bursting in the air? Hmm. <laughs> no, 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 my brother and my sister. Not in 1776 for a nation, but in 1865 for a long, long awaiting bride. He was right there, sounding, sounding the, the trumpet, trumpet, letting America, America know, know it was time, time to let his people let him go. What to the American slave is your 4th of July? I answer a day that reveals to him more than all of the days in the year, the gross injustice and cruelty to which he is the constant victim. I said the gross injustice and cruelty to which he is the constant victim. See, to him, your celebration is a sham, your boasted liberty and unholy license, your national greatness, swelling vanity, your sounds of rejoicing are empty and heartless, your denunciations of tyrants, brass-fronted impudence, your shouts of liberty and equality, hollow mockery, your prayers and hymns, your sermons and thanksgivings with all your religious parade and solemnity are to him mere bombast, fraud, deception, and hypocrisy. A thin veil to cover up crimes which would disgrace a nation of savages. There is not a nation on the earth guilty of practices more shocking and bloody than are the people of these United States at this very hour. Go where you may, search where you will, roam through all the monarchies and despotisms of the old world, travel through South America, search out every abuse, and when you found the last, lay your facts by the side of the everyday practices of this nation, and you will say with me that for revolting barbarity and shameless hypocrisy, America reigns without a rival. America reigns without a rival. America reigns without a rival. Things was looking fine. Freed from slavery and able to pursue a piece of the American pie. Revival hit in 1906 in the land where angels dwell. Brother William Seymour. Huh. 
tarried for the touch of the Holy Ghost, for the language of heaven, for the beauty of God being so close. All your problems just rolled out the door. Azusa Street closed its doors in 1909. 1909, don't forget that day. <laughs> but the power still went forth. Huh. Traveled all over and landed its feet in the assemblies of God, laid its head in the church of God in Christ, ran right into a rebirth, a renaissance. Integrated the racist with a trumpet, a saxophone, a big band. Jazz started off reconciled. He was reviving, planting new songs in his children, handing out stories like candy, saying, right, right, right. Fill the earth with your stories, planting seeds of poetry in County Cullens, Clyde McKay, Langston Hughes. Fathers of Harlem teaching us to hold fast to dreams. For if dreams die, life is like a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, even if they are deferred, even if they are choked up by Jim Crow weeds. Many beautiful moments of life bursting out with vibrancy. See, we sometimes forget we couldn't vote. We often escape from the slums to the humming body dial of the downtown sounds. We drown out sorrows and injustice with the beauty of culture and expression until it caught up with us, until we could not escape the weight of being seen as second class, refused from schools and dining halls and prosperity, and blood still cried out in the streets, lynched from the trees as strange fruit swayed, reminding us of our roots in this country. Why? Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a mother. A long way from home, a long way from home. Home is so, so far away. And yet there is no way that they could return. The mother in a land that would not recognize her own children. And home would no longer know. In the midst of pain, in the midst of pain upon pain. In the midst of in the midst of pain upon pain, he is the reviver. Pumping resiliency through our veins. Giving us a new song of gospel. Yeah. To make this land our new home. A long way. From
I feel the spirit moving. Everybody give a shout out. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Woo! Hey! Hey! <laughs> it's time. Uh, say what now? I said it's time. What time is it? It's time. Time for what? It's time for freedom. Oh. God saw through his lens of righteousness that oppression did not leave this land just change faces because truth never permeated hearts only documents and 13 year old Emmett Till's became a too costly price for civil rights it's time see justice oh it rolled in like thunder Rosa parking it in her seat bankrupting businesses bring inequality colored children being bused to better schools, mm. demonstrations hitting diners, movies, and voting booths. Mm. Many weren't ready for the shaking, but the kingdom was ready to advance. As the king of kings was saying, It's time to take my hand and knock on the door of the promised land. Well, it was time, time to rally the conscience of America yet again. For, for he, he is, is deliverer. deliverer. And he sent a Moses to unravel injustice mm -hmm. like yarn to change the fabric of this American quilt. Yes, yes he, he is, is deliverer. deliverer. And he sent a king to call this nation up to royalty, oh, to yeah. preach us happy, to Come give on. us a dream. Yes, he, he is deliverer. deliverer. And he assembled his angelic marching band to march to the front steps of this Great land. Bringing down fire, revelation, Ooh. and truth. That was not so self-evident, but being created equal, applied to all men. Oh, and all women, too. You right. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. Gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, marching up a freedom land. 8 a.m. August 28th, and the heat is pouring, sweltering like the hate that brought us here, like the hope that brought us here to march on Washington to hold on just a little while longer because everything gonna be all right in 1963, in 1968, in 2008, in 2018. Yes, everything gonna be just fine so long as we tread our mark where our footsteps will be heard. Walking down a Jim Crow road, paved exclusively uneven. Walking down a Jim Crow road, can't even get hired to sweep it. Walking down a Jim Crow road in search of freedom for Mr. Lincoln, because Lady Liberty has her eyes closed and won't see us coming, won't see us march to her American door with a red, white, blue frame and call her American name that doesn't include African and Indian and Mexican yet. Not until we sing her a lullaby of freedom that soothes and calms her to sleep so that she might dream of the life we so desire, a life of jobs and freedom march, a life of justice and freedom march, a life of peace and freedom march till the Emmett Tills are finally laid to rest, march, till the trees sway from the breeze and not the oversized leaves that hang in bondage, march, from the heart of Dixieland to Freedomland, we march, till the soft lulling lullaby becomes a thunderous roar of marching feet, creating a patriotic chant to freedom's beat, until America is finally awakened from the cadence and unites not only the states, but the races, the beautiful array of faces that occupy this space we call home bitter sweet home sing 
James Farmer, those marching jailhouse blues. Sing Josephine Baker, those exiled fruitful tunes. Sing young John Lewis, those controversial fire and brimstone truths. Sing Mahalia, how we got over Croon. Sing, oh beloved Dr. King of that dream to let freedom ring with a chorus of 250,000 voices in sync. From every mountainside we sing. From every state and every city we sing till we no longer live by color. Oh, we sing with you that catchy tune so all God's children will be able to hold hands and sing and sing and sing free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. We are free at last. Oof. There's music in the air today. Come on, y'all. Let's march. I think America's ready to join the choir. April 3rd, 1968, a day where the earth felt a king slip away. He had much to say, he had still yet to say. But something was tiptoeing into time, lurking in a corner, soon to make a martyr out of this great prophet. And oh, he fought the good fight, he fought it well. And he left us with the baton to carry it on to lands he saw when he closed his lids to sleep at night. To lands he dreamed of when he went into the heavenlies to see the story Papa God was writing. To the land, the promised land, he saw from the mountaintop. He said he may not get there with us. Oh, we wish he could have crossed over that Jordan. Oh, we wish his eyes could have seen what his eyes dreamed. But he left. <laughs> he left us with a whole heap of victory and a whole heap of beauty still yet to be birthed, April 4th, 1968, the day a true king was snatched from this earth, but God. How justice was demanded and justice was denied. Make them hear you. Make them hear you. And
and say to those who blame us for the way we chose to fight that sometimes there are battles that are more than black or white and i would not lay down my sword when justice was my right make them hear you Go out and tell our story to your daughters and your sons. Make them hear you. Make them hear you. And tell them in our struggle we were not the only one. Make them hear you. Make them hear you. Your sword may be a sermon or the power of your pen. Teach every child to raise their voice And then my brothers then Will justice be demanded by Ten million righteous men Make them hear you And when they hear you I'll be near you Come on, everybody clap your hands like this. Hey, yo, yo, one, two, three, here we go. Ah, hey, come on, God, come and walk with me. You sent your son and he came to set me free. Come on, Holy Ghost, we want the fire and the flame. Ah, yeah, we want to burn for your name. Hey, fire, fuego, you know, let's go. Hey, you know what it is. See, this is what it looks like when restoration hits a community, mm. when vitality and pride starts blooming. Now, it was far from perfect. Mm. Yes, they still had the sting of brutality, the fear of being profiled, locked up with a thrown away key. But dreams, they started budding. Leaders, they started emerging. Black Panthers took responsibility for communities, fed the kids, gave them clothes, mm -hmm. and spoke into them identity. Yes, seeds were taking root in the ground of possibility. Jobs became available and homes became more stable. 80s and 90s. Oh, yes. More firsts emerged to the forefront. Oh, no longer knocking on the door, but owning a piece of the American storefront. <laughs> First black coach inducted into the B-Ball Hall of Fame. Oh, yes, Clarence Gaines got game. <laughs> Aretha. The first for the hall of rock and roll, teaching everyone within ears reach a little R-E-S-P-E-C-T. <laughs> first black Miss America and Miss USA. First black to win a Nobel Prize. Hmm. Toni Morrison captured the black perspective through even the bluest eye. Come on. First black astronaut and four-star general. First black elected governor and U.S. representative. First black woman TV host. Oh, y'all know Oprah? She built her post and held it down. And we can't forget when rap came on the scene, beatboxing its way into the American dream. Ooh. American culture didn't, didn't know, know what, what hit it. it. Ha, <laughs> they spit rhymes to ignite passion in the communities, mm. to inject boldness and positivity, urging folks to stay away from the drugs and to pick up a book, to drink in in the rapper's delight and to not fight to divide but for a U-N-I-T-Y hey <laughs> hey yo Holy Spirit though what was God when the beat dropped Oh, he was right there emceeing the greatest restoration EP of the century <laughs> you right <Ooh. laughs> Walk with me, Lord. Walk 
morning. I'm Brian Gumbel. And welcome to the very first National Oprah Winfrey Show! And the Oscar goes to Halle Berry in Monsters Day. This moment is for Dorothy Dandridge, Lena Horne, Diane Carroll. Black male being brutally beaten and kicked by Los Angeles police officers. History shame, I rise. Up from a past rooted in pain, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the hope and the dream of the slave. And so, naturally. There I go, right. You're a doctor and mom's a lawyer, and you're both successful and everything, and that's great. But maybe I was born to be a regular person and have a regular life. If you weren't a doctor, I wouldn't love you less because you're my dad. And so, instead of acting disappointed because I'm not like you, maybe you can just accept who I am and love me anyway because I'm your son. Theo? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. No wonder you get D's and everything. Now, you are afraid to try because you're afraid that your brain is going to explode and it's going to ooze out of your ears. <laughs> now, I'm telling you, you are going to try as hard as you can. And you're going to do it because I said so. I am your father. I brought you in this world and I'll take you out. <laughs> Son, come here. Come here. <laughs> now listen to me. I just want you to do the best you can. That's all. I'll try, Dad. Yeah. I really will. All right. I love you. Yeah, Dad. Huh? I know. Yeah. And maybe... Your mother loved you, too. <laughs> we have, have no... Any that 
that will do this moment. Justice Just came rolling in like thunder, reminding us of dreams, dream. These dreams deferred. They did not know the possibility of this moment. Hope often got lodged between a promise and a disappointment, a triumph and a setback, a dream and a death. But this moment, this moment where promises cracked out of the sky, and rained down on the children of the children, stolen from their motherland, filling their veins with pride and an assurance they've been heard. Like a ringing bell of liberty, like the clanging dishes at a table, finally prepared where black skin can have a seat, like a chant of victory. 40 years ago, the king who released this dream into the seams of the American fabric was cut down. But today, today the seed of that dream is full grown, has stepped into its own presidential and proud millions of votes from all around. Do you know what this means? Can you see what this screams? Black no longer means slave. No longer is deemed worthy of being hung from trees. Or held from their God-given destiny. No longer means inferior, worthy of having no voice, but given the choice to run for the greatest seat in this land. And, and he, he won. won. <laughs> Chosen by the descendants of those who wrote hatred in their songs. But now, a new song is being sung. Yes, yes we, we can. can. The mantra of the brother still making this land his new home. <sighs> we have no words. We only have the praises of those who waited for a miracle, patiently tarried for a breakthrough. He is the great promise keeper through and through. It was a creed written into the founding documents that declared the destiny of a nation. Yes, we can. It was whispered by slaves and abolitionists as they blazed the trail toward freedom. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. It was sung. It was sung by immigrants as they struck out the Mississippi Shore of pioneers who pushed westward. It was the call of workers organized, women who reached for the ballots, a president who chose the moon as our new frontier, and a king who took us to the mountaintop and pointed the way to the promised land. Yes, we can for justice and equality. Yes, we can. 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 Yes, we can to opportunity and prosperity. Yes, we can to opportunity and prosperity. Yes, we can heal this nation. Heal this nation. Yes, we can repair this world. Yes, we can. 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 Yes, we know the battle ahead will be long. But always remember that no matter what obstacle stand in our way, nothing can stand in the way of the power of millions of voices calling for change. We have been told we cannot do this by a chorus of sentence. It will only grow louder and more disciplined. We've been asked 
pause for a reality check. We've been warned against offering the people of this nation false hope. But in the unlikely, unlikely story, story that is America, America there's, there's never, never been, been anything, anything false about, about hope. hope. school and villain are the same as the dreams of boy who learns on the streets of LA. We will remember that there's something happening in America. That we are not as divided as our politics suggest. That we are one people. That we are one nation. And together we will begin the next great chapter in the American story with three words that will ring from coast to coast. From sea to shining sea. Yes, we can. 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 Walk with me, Lord, walk with me. Walk with me. Take my hand and lead me on journeys I could not have imagined journeying without you. From the African coast to the Americas. From the slave ships to the auction block. From the plantations to the place where, the, where we would feel the Holy Ghost drop. From the Civil War to the university. From Jim Crow to marching streets for equal pay and equal opportunity. From Renaissance in Harlem to blues in Memphis. From television to the big screen. From segregated playgrounds to interracial marriage vows. We have journeyed with you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit have taken you by the hand and have never let go. And, and we, we never, never will. will. We will journey with you out of the poverty, out of the pain, uh -huh. out of the prison cells, the trauma, the stains, lingering in the shadows of who you think yourself to be. And we will never forsake you, nor will we ever leave you. We are unfolding your prophetic story. Pulling it straight out of our rib cage and putting it out onto the page. You are the dream <laughs> and the hope of the slave. The promised land, soon to be occupied. My, My love, love for you. you, soon to bridge the divide. In this home, away from home. My dream for you. To not just be proud American citizens. But, but to, to be, be crowned, crowned with, with brotherhood. brotherhood. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. While I'm on this yeah. 
tedious journey. Come on. I need Jesus <laughs> to walk with me. Sing it with us. Walk, walk with me, Lord. Stand on up. Walk with me. This is Tanasha. I haven't figured out yet what she can't do. Swim. <laughs> but the heart of what you just experienced came a lot out of her. Do you see Christ in her, the hope of glory? Yep. Um, Tanasha, you produced this, is this correct? And Alton, you did all the music, I forget what you call that, some of the music. And I just wanna thank you, I wanna thank you for your heart, I wanna thank you for the Being Leadership, I wanna thank all the artists for um, what you guys gave us tonight. More than anything, it's the wholeheartedness with which this came out of. I know, I don't know how many of you feel your hearts are just really tender right now, because we just got, a, we just went through a pretty big journey together. I don't know how you sum up that that amount of history, the way that you did, but you did it brilliantly. And, um, oh gosh, 
what an upgrade for all of us to get invited into this conversation. Thank you so much for doing this, Tanasha. Yeah, we're so grateful. You know, what we wanted to do just for a few minutes is we wanted to just have a conversation around just the story and journey that we just watched and experienced. And um, so, Tanasha, could you, actually, I need to tell, let everybody know, Tanasha would miss black Oklahoma. You need to know that. That's really important. I got permission from Jonathan to make sure you'll be okay with that. As we say in my community, I'm so done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was Miss Black Oklahoma in 2007 to 2008. Two years? 2007. Well, no, it's like the that span one year, of the... Got it. Okay, I'm all back to back. Dang, that yes. would be a whole nother level. Right? <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> but it was under the leadership of Clara Looper. She was coined as one of the mothers of the civil rights movement, leading one of the first ever sit-ins in our nation. And she started that pageant. So that's amazing. it was an honor to be a part of it. I wanted to make sure everybody knew that. Cause that Thank you. That's a little fun fact. You're welcome. <laughs> I won't embarrass you anymore. Um, could you tell us a little bit of the inspiration behind this whole thing that you guys did tonight? Just tell us a little bit of the story, the inspiration, and, and what God showed you in the process. Yeah. Um, I had to actually go on my own personal healing journey. Um, with the Lord concerning race, because I've experienced, I mean, I grew up in, in Oklahoma, which is considered the Midwest, but it's Southern culture. Um, and so there's still a lot of pain that we're experiencing in this nation and a lot of oppression that the black community is still experiencing. And I was raised in a home with a, an elder for a father who was a minister teaching and preaching the word um, and a mother who was a counselor by gifting and a, a teacher as well and teaching us the history because it was not being taught to me in the public school system. And we would go to plantations. I would call them field trips, but she called them vacations. Um, <laughs> we go to plantations and we'd go to abolitionist homes. And I don't know how many underground railroads I've stood in and different places where I got to see the history unfolding in front of my eyes. And I, I had bitterness in my heart at different times. And as I was experiencing racism, um, personally, I, it just kind of started tugging on me. But when I came here and started ministry school, the Lord was like, let's start touching this area. And he started changing the lens. Instead of looking constantly at the wound, one of my favorite phrases we say here is, you, what you behold, you become. And, and so instead of looking at the wound and becoming pain, I began to look at the healer and became healed. Um, And that was this journey. And last year, he actually, for one of my home groups, my, one of my good friends, Paulette Bailey, she, um, yes, girl, we speak your name. Um, pa <laughs> Paulette Bailey, she's across the pond now, but she asked me to lead a home group of something for Black History Month. And I, was, I had never actually explored where I was in my journey until she asked me. And that's what came out. What you guys saw tonight first started there of me actually asking the question instead of the lament, where were you, God, when this was going down? No, actually, where were you in the room? What were you releasing? What aspect of your nature were you actually pouring out in this nation? And he started to show me, did you know that gospel got started here? That was me. <laughs> Did you know that I started giving you songs to sing because I know how music soothes and I'm the comforter? That was me. Don't you realize I was raising up people on both sides of the aisle to fight during the abolitionist movement and even in the civil rights. That was me. He was showing me where his hand was so involved and, and, and he was not an absent father. He was very much present and that's where the inspiration for this night came from. That's amazing. <laughs> Stunning. You know, I want to read a verse real quick to you, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. It says, Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. You know, I've, I've been really dwelling on this verse uh, the last, literally the last few days, and um, I, do, I never honestly noticed this, but God, God likes to His Spirit to rest on you as an individual, and then He likes to rest His Spirit on a company of people. 
And what he's doing right now in this house and in this movement, he is causing people of all races, all background, all ethnic group to come together, to be fitted together so that his spirit could rest on that. And that's what we're doing. Tonight is a step in that direction. And uh, just a couple of years ago, Candace and I were part of this, um, this leadership, small leadership gathering just in central California in Carmel. It's a beautiful part of California. And we found ourselves in a room with um, two men, uh, 12 people, but two that I want to bring up, a man named Trip Lee and Propaganda. And um, if you don't know who they are, I encourage you to check them out. But um, they began, it was right around the Baltimore riots that were going on. Would that be, oh man, 15, 16, somewhere in there? Yeah. And it would, on the, and the whole topic on the news was super, super heavy stuff. And we left that gathering with uh, realizing that we have a, a lot to learn. And I remember coming home from that trip and just like, how, how, do, we, how do we go after this? How, this ministry of reconciliation, what did it look like in this conversation? How many know that because you follow Jesus, you have a ministry of reconciliation? Everyone put your hand up. Okay, that's everyone. That's not one we can opt out of. But in this part of the conversation, and I remember coming home and um, uh, a family here, Amanda Peterson, she's not living here anymore. Her and her family moved back, back east. But I met with her and I sat down with her and I said, Amanda, I'm a, I have a lot to learn and I want to I wanna understand a few things. And one of the questions are, I've been so scared to talk about this because I don't want to be misunderstood or be perceived as something I know I'm not. And she looked at me and she said, Eric, you're not racist. You might be ignorant, but you're not racist. And I was like, I can live with ignorance I can, and I can grow from that. But for us tonight, and this has been a, a piece of the journey for us for the last couple of years, we've had a lot of meetings behind closed doors, just really seeking the Lord on this with the team that's been up on the stage tonight and others. They're saying, God, we, we want to be a part of this conversation to see reconciliation and healing come to our nation. And, and see the body of Christ be a demonstration of what we just read, that the Spirit of God can rest on this house. And so, Tanasha, could you, there is a question in this, could you share with us, um, what would you encourage us in this journey? Because we're all in this together. This isn't us and them, this is we. And so could you just give some, just some encouragement, just direction, what can we do to keep this conversation moving forward? I first want to encourage everyone, I just I keep hearing it ring through my head, greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. This principality hovering over our nation is almost 400 years old. Literally in 2019, we will reach the 400 year mark since slavery first started in our nation. For those that love numbers, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> So 400 years, it's, it, it feels very complex, but I want to encourage you tonight that it's a family work. It's a family work. It's not, it's, it's not a, it's, it's, the world's already been overcome, right? So the battle's won. It's now just time to assemble the family. And there are three things that I see God doing right now um, in this area. And you may be involved in all three or you may just be involved in one area, but he's doing a work of justice, bringing justice to the injustices that still actually exists concerning blacks versus whites in the United States. And if you're not up to speed on what that is, then that might be a journey you can go on to start learning about the mass incarceration, to learn about redlining, to learn about the disparities in education and, and poverty and, and the ways the systems are actually set up to keep it that way. Um, the second thing that God's doing is he's doing a healing work. And you know we love healing here. Yes, we do. But it's hard to get to unity if people are in pain. It's hard to get to unity if we bypass a conversation with someone in pain because we want to politicize it. It's not a political thing right now. It's a heart thing right now. Um, it's, it's a family work right it's now. It's good. And, it, it, and it, there may be some work in policies, yes, but most of the works are in relationships. It's going to be in who you invite into your home. It's going to be who you approach, even in the midst of your discomfort, because Jesus did it. He was willing to be called a sinner by the most holiest ones, according to their own standards, to go and sit with those in pain so that he could heal them. Yeah. And so there's a, a ministry of care that's actually needed right now. And then lastly, he's raising up bridges, people that are going to be the ones that bridge the divide to bring the black brother and the white brother together. Because 
it is through the ministry of reconciliation, but for this nation that re in front of reconciliation means to do again. And this is actually to this magnitude being done for the first time. So we get to be a part of yeah. history. Come on. Um, so I would encourage you to go low, be humble. Yeah. If you don't know, you don't know. But now that you know, you don't know, go find out. You can't get off the hook. <laughs> go find out, ask questions, look up resources. Um, we actually, if anyone is interested tonight, we, uh, the Stirring family invited me and Juliet Reed and we spoke about this as sisters on stage that have been running after this together as black and white sister, sisters. And we actually have some resources, some startup resources on their website. So go check out, check out those, those resources and just start rolling up your sleeves and doing the work of family. That's good. I love what you're saying as far as no matter where we're at, we have a responsibility with what we've just experienced even tonight. Like, what are we going to do with it? And it, in, as Eric was saying, you know, we don't, um, okay, so if we're ignorant in an area, then we still have a responsibility then to learn and to ask questions and to read and find out what the history is because we love each other. We love each other and you're that worth it. You're that worth it for us to find out and to dig in a little bit more because we can't stay in a place of ignorance. And if we're in pain and we're hurting, we need to seek out healing and wholeness. Yeah. And whatever that looks like, we all have a responsibility to engage. And so tonight, we're just, we're just standing. Mm -hmm. we, I, I am humbled to utilize our stage for this. I'm honored and humbled and I'm just so thankful. We have these declaration cards and um, I think We've given out all that we have, but I just want to read it um, to you and ask just that you guys would, would engage and just um, continue on the journey with us. It says, we declare, as we seek God's heart for our nation and the world, we are believing God for his loving kindness and mercy to cover all racial injustice, for the healing of the national wounds that racism has caused, for racial unity in his church that embraces and celebrates diversity and for this to overflow to all the world, releasing the spirit of adoption to the marginalized and sealing us all in brotherhood under Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on. And then on the back, it just has um, open space for prayers. But our heart really would be that uh, tonight that we're not just entertained, but it's a night of learning, but also engaging that we would step up into the moment that God's allowed us to live in and really walk out what does love look like to all the people that and family that he's put around us. Yep. And it looks like diversity. It looks like learning and growing um, about the people around us that are a part of our family so that we can love them even more. Yeah. So Bethel Church, we just want to, this for us is a, a stand together. And I want to challenge every one of you, put your politics aside put your opinion to the side and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you what we've been missing all this time. So we're in a learning journey right now. And I want to ask the church as a whole, obviously this is just a portion of the group. I know people watching online and, and word will get out to the rest of our body, but I want to ask about, we're here to learn right now. And I know this is one piece of the conversation of black history, but we know there's Latinos, Asian, and Native American, and the list grows. This is not the one conversation. We have many conversations that we're going to be going into. And so let's do this together, okay? Let's be a shining example in our nation, in our city, in our state, of what it looks like when people come together underneath the Lordship of Jesus Christ, and we are being built and being fitted together till the Spirit of God can rest. And that's what we're here for. And so I just want to challenge us. We're here to learn and let's let God do the work. In my heart, more than having a message is actually just to be it. Like I actually just want to experience what does love look like between us? How can I love you? And how do we get to a place of healing and wholeness and abundance together? And how do we honor each other? So I, that's what my heart is. More than us telling the world anything, it's just being and inviting, you know, me seeking out who, how can I do that, Lord? And how can I love Tanasha? How can I love the people that he's put in my lives and around me? Yep. So. That's awesome. Okay. Let's do the ministry time. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, we would love, because this is, it's a big topic. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we got exposed to tonight. I don't know how your all hearts are feeling. And we all have different experiences and um, are at different places in our healing as well. I would like to invite our ministry 
team forward, come um, forward. But we also have uh, our being leadership and uh, prayer servants. If we can have you over more on my left hand side, because they are prepared. If you have, if you need healing or um, want specific prayer for anything that you received tonight, um, or with anything with injustices or racial stuff, I I want you to seek them out and actually get some prayer. We are a house of healing. We are going after breakthrough. If you need healing in your body, healing in your relationships, in any area, we have a whole ministry team up here that can pray for you for anything. But Tanasha, could you wrap this up with a prayer over us? Yeah, yeah so why don't we have everyone stand and then have Tanasha pray. And as soon as we're done, we're just going to open up the front for ministry, for one-on-one ministry tonight. So how many are thankful for Tanasha and the team for what they did tonight? It's phenomenal. Wow. Thank you all for bringing your hearts. Thank you all for staying and sharing this night with us. Um, We felt the unity in the room, and that's because you brought yourself. That's because you engaged, and you went there, and you said yes. And it's just a bunch of little yeses that lead us into the arms of one another. So thank you so much. Oh, Jesus. Hmm. We thank you so much for what you are doing in the earth right now. We thank you, God, that you chose to birth us for such a time as this, that we would be chosen to actually contribute our gifts, our identity, our voices to actually advancing the kingdom in this hour. Holy Spirit, we just ask that you just just descend in this place like right now. Like just show up, show up and fill our hearts with what your heart is beating for. Fill our minds with the mind of Christ, God, that we would actually step forward, not in our own agenda, but in yours, that we would see what you're doing and that we would do it, that we would hear what you're saying and that we would say it, God, that we would do it, Father, with complete obedience and with joy. We thank you, Father, for the spirit of unity, for what you're doing in this nation, God, for what you are doing actually between the black and the white brother, that you are bringing us together, that you are crowning us with brotherhood, that you are fulfilling this thing, God, that you are redeeming it all because you are redeemer. You are the redeemer. We thank you, God, that (laughs) we thank you, God, that you are even doing this through the arts that you're doing this, Lord God, through the artisans, through Renaissance, Father. We just ask that that just move forward from here, for, from here forward, Lord God, that there would just be messages that would, that would start to bubble up in artists. Lord God, there would be the, the spirit of creativity that would bubble up in singers and actors and dancers and that they would begin to heal this nation in places where the spirit of religion or the spirit of or the political spirit is crusting over our hearts, God. Permeate the soil of our hearts right now that we would feel heaven, the weight of heaven, and that we would say yes to it because it is your kingdom come, your will be done. And God, any, we just, any divide that even exists in this room right now, we just say leave in Jesus' name. Leave in Jesus' name. And we just invite the spirit of unity through the spirit of adoption. Get us ready for the journey, God. We know that it may not be easy, but we know you're with us. Get us ready for the journey. Bring the spirit of revelation and the spirit of truth. Give us dreams. Give us creative ideas. And God, those whose hearts are burning for justice, God, just anoint them right now. Those whose hearts are burning right now, Father, seal it with your love right now and give them wisdom for their journey. Those that you are anointing for healing, Lord God, whose hearts are burning for healing right now, give them downloads, Father, of how to actually pastor and mother and father a generation into healing. God, those whose hearts are burning right now to be bridges, show them, Jesus, how you were the greatest bridge and just show them how to follow in your footsteps. We thank you for the ministry of reconciliation. We count it an honor and a privilege to carry it to this nation. And we say, let it be done. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, we're going to put some music on it and want to encourage you. So basically, there's your right side, my left side. If you want to come, and get, come up and get prayer specifically, what we just talked about tonight. And then if you just need a miracle in your body, healing in your body, anybody up here can take care of that one. All right? So just go ahead and make your way front forward to be prayed for. Bless you. Thank you so much for being here tonight. And let's do this together.
As the weeded boughs down low, when the autumn wind. 